So recently, I've been in New York and I've been seeing all these Ford commercials, uh, basically daring you to come drive one. That's what they say, they say drive one. Because I guess they're implying that if you come drive one, you'll never want to drive anything else and you and your tourists can live happily ever after. So here we are, we're in Utah, we're in the mountains, uh, we're on an amazing road. And uh, if you thought that, that I would come this far to drive the new Taurus, you are dead wrong. So that's why we brought this GT500 KR, king of the road, 540 horsepower, supercharged V8, serial number seven, it's a nice blue color, big brake, short shifter, loud exhaust, and we're gonna go beat the crap out of it. Man, driving the GT500 KR, out in the mountains in Utah. There is snow. There is like feet of snow over here. I'm not kidding. Like this is, it, it, we're almost in May and there is like multiple feet of snow in some part of this mountain. And I'm hammering a rear wheel drive car around some really sharp turns. <laughs> uh, I've done dumber things than this in a car before. <laughs> I like it though. It's it's really uh, it's it, it absorbs the the bumps in the road pretty well. Nice. You can kind of it does stick in the turns. It feels. Now the way they've balanced out the suspension on this GT500, the front is lowered 20 millimeters, the rear is lowered 15 millimeters, and uh, it's also using a coilover suspension. It feels, I gotta tell you, to be honest, it feels much, much better than the regular GT500. Uh, it doesn't feel nearly as front heavy, um, although it is a pretty, you know, it's a 4,100 pound car, so it's not a light car, but it sticks really nicely. Ooh, yeah. There's actually, it's really very balanced. There's, there's no understeer, uh, which is for a front heavy car is a, is a good thing. And it seems Ford has picked a nice road for us too. I'm digging this road. Oh, the, it actually, you can heel tow it really easily. This is a good road. I love the shifter, uh, with the exception of almost missing fifth and uh, putting it into reverse. There we go. Light him up. Then I can hang it out a little. I got. I do love supercharger wine. It does. It does throw you back in the seat for sure. It's got it's got a lot of power. It's it's uh it's pretty immediate. It's not like a it's not laggy. I gotta tell you, it, it doesn't feel like 540 horsepower. It's probably because the car is so heavy. Um, I mean, it's a 4100 pounds is a lot is a is a, is a heavy car. Uh, the Ford GT was in the low threes, I think, and that car had 550 horsepower, and that car would probably destroy this one in a race, but. It still, I mean, it it still feels powerful for sure. <laughs> Ooh! Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> I hope that. Oh my god, this is a not so turn. We <laughs> got a carousel here. What? <laughs> that turn is unbelievable. We absolutely have, whoa. Oh my God, dude. Don't kill me. <laughs> what? We just lost, almost lost all our camera gear, but it's okay because that turn was worth it. Seriously, if we broke all that camera gear, it would have been no, worth it because that turn was amazing. That may be the best turn I've ever seen on a public road. No kidding. Now, the Ford engineers told me that they 
specially designed this hood out of carbon fiber. They, were, they went on and on about the hood. They're really into it. Apparently the nostrils, two of them, there's two, two big nostrils up front. One of them actually goes, is a ram air, goes directly into the intake. And the other one, I just, I just missed fifth again. Uh, and the other one you, acts as a venturi system to suction out uh, engine heat. And actually, the, the GT500 is like 490 horsepower. This one is 540, but they actually haven't upgraded the boost on the car at all. It's all airflow uh, into the intake, out of the exhaust, and then software, and that's all it is. And, that's, uh, and then you get that power. But they managed to save about 50 pounds of weight off the car uh, using carbon fiber and, and taking out a few, a few things. And, uh, and I'm really hammering this thing pretty hard right now. <laughs> I will say this, and I will say this definitively, it is the best Mustang I've ever driven. It's not, it hasn't, you know, it hasn't gotten over being a Mustang. It's still a Mustang. Although, as I was just told, it is an $80,000 Mustang. Uh, yes, you heard me right. It's $80,000. Uh, and for $80,000, you do still get a Mustang, but it's a nice Mustang. Man, that wine is awesome. I love that supercharger wine. And I'm, I'm hammering this thing pretty hard on, this, on these corners here. And it's sticking. It, I mean, I haven't heard so much as a tire squeal yet. I think we're getting to the point where uh, a Mustang could could actually be a sports car and not no longer a muscle car. Unfortunately, that point comes at eighty thousand um, dollars, and for eighty thousand dollars, I mean, you know, there's a Z06, and I'm pretty sure that a Z06 would take this. Uh, in fact, I'm very sure a Z06 would take this. Although uh, this car has a back seat. Uh, this car is a little more comfortable on a day-to-day -day basis than a Z06. Nonsense. Um, <laughs> except for Gene, who loved a Z06 for a brief period of time until he murdered it. I gotta tell you, I like the car. I really, really didn't think I was going to, but I do. On the next Garage 419. New episodes of Garage 419, Tuesday and Thursday. So the other day I was driving down the 405 and I saw a car, it was a yellow car, and it totally cut me off, and that really pissed me off because usually when I drive down, I'm, <laughs> I'm Matt from the New York Motor Club. This is Garage 419 in Ford. I'm really sorry for what I'm about to do. It's not bad! <laughs>